It is PFAS Awareness Week and seven years since we learned of toxic chemicals pouring into the Cape Fear River. PFAS or forever chemicals have been linked to health problems, including cancer. WR's Liz McLaughlin visited a Raleigh water treatment plant today to learn how utilities are getting these chemicals out of our drinking water. This building behind me will soon be replaced with giant silos of powder activated carbon. They're already using that carbon to remove PFAS from the water, but are expanding that program. Just one of the many upgrades that utilities across the state and country will be undertaking to comply with new limits on PFAS in drinking water. Officials toured the E.M. Johnson water treatment plant today, including Congresswoman Deborah Ross and Department of Environmental Quality Secretary Elizabeth Beiser. Raleigh Water employees shared information about PFAS levels and treatment plans. Currently, Raleigh's PFAS levels are below the new limits, but more than 40 utilities in the state are above the threshold, requiring expensive technology to remove the forever chemicals. Stopping the pollution at the source is obviously the most cost-effective way to address PFAS pollution. I firmly believe that the people who polluted should show, shoulder that burden, and um, that should be the first place that we go. But we need to have clean and safe drinking water for our health, for the next generation. And so we can't just say, oh, it's too expensive. DEQ has proposed ground and surface water standards that would reduce industrial discharges of PFAS into drinking water supplies. Republican members of the Environmental Management Commission have delayed those efforts, but DEQ officials are hoping for action at the July 10th meeting. The PFAS removal upgrades here will probably only raise water bills by about 1%, but that number could be much higher in places like Fayetteville, Burlington, and Durham, where the contamination levels are higher. In Raleigh, I'm Liz McLaughlin, WRAL News.